uh, goal line scheme, we didn't show him where they run out to the line of scrimmage, and they, you know, they had the big body, and then they, they, he was going back and forth between 75 and 94, and you know, didn't spot him, so they didn't cover him on the f fourth and two. Should have been, should have been our ball, and then. On the goal line, they ran up and they hid the wide receiver right up behind the center, and then they they snuck him out there and Gibb saw him, and he got picked, you know. So um, again, good good scheme by them. Did not show them all the trickeration down there in the goal line. So uh, when that stuff when that stuff happens, you know, the first person to blame is myself, you know, for not showing them that exact look. But you know, it's now how uh, how are we going to respond to those things? Because you put it on tape, so now you're going to see that kind of stuff. So you can bet we're, we're working on that stuff. How is getting off the field on third and fourth down something you guys can work on in practice? I mean, is it a thing you can work on, or is it just kind of like teachable moments, stay in your assignments? No, 100%. Great question. Uh, you know, if you go back, if you look at the first half, right, you're coming out, and I didn't like all, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the flipping of the field, you know, the, but when we went in at halftime and looked, you know, they had 30 something yard or whatever it was, 30 something yards rushing or 40 yards rushing or something like that. Um, and so when you when you looked at it, they couldn't run the ball when we said, hey, we know you're running the ball. We're putting guys up in there. You can't run the ball. Then, and what was happening though was the third downs. We weren't getting off the field on the third down. So the, the third down plan wasn't coordinated well enough by myself. Um, with the rush and, and the back end, you know what I mean? You saw some things where we were getting home, but the, but the coverage wasn't in the right spot and then vice versa. And then in the second half, what we tried to do is affect the quarterback a little bit more and go after the quarterback. And so it opened up some of those seams for those runs in there. And um, and again, it was uh, it was it was really the third downs and the dang uh, goal line trickeration down there. But again, that's that's on me for not not drilling it with those guys. So that way they they knew they knew what was coming and all that stuff. So you know, gotta gotta start over again. What do you find, Tony? That you can do in a situation like that with when you have an extra 24 hours after a game, especially after one that there's probably a lot of teaching moments from. Yeah, yeah. you're back up in here right away. You know, you, you, you can't you can't sleep at all. And then you come back and you say, uh, how does this not beat you again? You know, what I mean, like you're going to you're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to you know, you're going to get the you're going to get schemed up a little bit here and there. So now it's like, OK, what did they see? Why did they see it? And how do we prevent stuff like that from happening again? And then you go back through your whole process and say, OK, you know, in our did we work enough, you know, goal line passes last week? Okay, well, maybe we didn't. So now, you know, now you work on goal line passes even more so. You know what I mean? Third downs wasn't coordinated enough, so now it's, okay, emphasis on third downs even more so. You know what I mean? So you're going back through and looking at the process and making sure that that you're doing what you are what you need to do to make sure that the guys are in those positions to make make plays in the game. So you guys take, take the, the – reality that especially in the second half of that game that they weren't the more physical team yeah, yeah. you know again that that that's uh that's why they went out there today and and uh and wanted to compete you know that, that, that was the thing and again uh, you know I, I know there's a lot to it but you know i i put it on myself because you know you're calling the game in the first half and you're telling them hey i, I you guys ain't gonna run the ball and they're not running the ball I mean, they're they're not running the ball. It was really the third downs that kept the flipping the field and kept them on there and all the plays and stuff after that first drive touchdown. And then, you know, you change it and say, hey, let me go after the quarterback a little bit more. And all those seams open up, and now you're like, okay, you know, now you're kind of kind of playing chess with the guy and stuff like that. So, you know, half of that is on me, and then half of it is is making sure that again we put those guys in those positions to to go make plays and that. We got to give them the confidence to go out there and play, man. You know they're not going to always be 100%. But the the prideful thing about that is, guys play so damn hard and so damn physical that they make up for those errors. You know what I mean? And just didn't feel like that that chip on the shoulder, that edge was there like that. So, where does tackling maybe rank on the list of issues that cropped up last week? Yeah, yeah. same deal. You know, again, you, you see, coach says, you know, tracking your hip, dominant contact. I mean, that showed up consistently. You know what I mean? And it's guys just not cutting loose you know they, they have a guy lined up and you know they don't quite trust it so then they start they start trying to cut a guy off and then the guy cuts back on you and and gains an extra four five six yards you know what i mean so um just all things that you got to go back and say are we working out enough are we emphasizing it enough and are we demanding it enough and so you know we'll start we started uh, yesterday and uh with the emphasis on on trying to fix those things he said right after the game, guys have to do their 111th. Did you see guys do some uncharacteristic stuff where maybe they got 
a little outside of their job. No, I, I think I think it was just again the the execution. Like like I said, the first play of the game against the first the same call, one or two yard gain. You know what I mean? They come back, run very similar run in overtime, and it's for twenty something yards. You know what I mean? It's just the consistency of of execution. You know what I mean? And coach coaches has laid down three things that he just wants this team to play play with. You know, he wants to take the ball away. We want to be the most physical team and we want to execute. I mean, and so when you don't do two of those things, it's going to be hard to hard to play good defensive football, especially with especially with what the guys are doing on offense. You know, we got a, the, the 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 freshman QB over there balling his ass off. You know, what I mean, you score 24 points. You need to you need to help his ass. You know, what I mean, so that's 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 on that's on the defense. You know, you got a sense of uh, if, if Tommy can be available this weekend, but also Sire, how he did uh, yeah. in his place on Friday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I give credit to Tommy. He's he's a, he's he's as tough as they come because that happened. It happened and we saw it and, you know, he, he tried to tape it up, tried to put a foot in sole, tried to do, tried to change the shoes, whatever it was. Like he did all these things and went out there and you could see after the first, after the first series, like, okay, he's not, he not right, but he, you know, he didn't want to come out. And then you throw Sierra in there and that's a great story of, of a guy preparing, preparing to play and getting his chance. And I thought he was probably one of the most competitive guys on the field that night, period. Like he wanted, he was up in guys' faces. He was excited. You know, the, the, the third down, uh, they called him for a PI and, and it was like, hey man, you gonna play like that. We'll take, we'll take that stuff, man. You get up, you get up and challenge and compete. So it was good to see him do it. Now it's a new week. Got to start that whole process over and we'll see where Tommy is, but it's good to know, you know, some of those guys like, uh, like Sierra, they're preparing to play like a starter. Does Riley Van Poppel factor into your lineup this week, or is he still on the the four game path? No, I, I mean that's that's a that's one up to coach, and then you know if he approaches us like that to see where we're at with with him. You know, um, there's some guys getting some getting some valuable snaps. You know, that, that when you're on the grass, you're a starter. It doesn't matter when you go out there, you're a starter, and so they're putting it on tape. So you know, you're trying to evaluate the best combination of guys to go in there. So he hadn't said anything yet about Van Pop, but you know it. it if he does, and we rock out with it. He's so obviously he substituted a lot up front, you know, not just this year, but for 16 games. Mm -hmm. Does Illinois go in tempo and some of the things that they were able to do against your your front with the doubles that they were using? Does it does it? Do you, do you have to look at the way that you're subbing or how many too too many too little? Like how do you how do you um, how do you react to the way that the, the sub patterns worked against their offense? No, I, I think I think it was they were okay. Um, you know, that's funny that you say about the subs because we're looking at the comparison between last year and this year. And if we're not subbing enough guys, you know, I mean, if, if if guys are playing too much, you know, and you go back and look and like last year you had, you know, linebackers wise, you had Luke and you had Nick and you had you had all those guys and John. So so guys were taking, you know, 30 ish reps, 35 reps. And then you go back and look now and they're taking 40, 50, 60 reps. You know, what I mean, so um, it's a deal where. Uh, you wanna you wanna put guys in there who have trained uh, uh, a la Sierra, you know, who have prepared the right way and can go out there and perform. But also, you know, you wanna you wanna make sure you take snaps off of them early when you can, right? So that way, in critical moments, you got those guys as fresh you, as you can be. So um, we'll continue to look at that and stuff. But uh, I don't think I don't think that was uh, that was a problem as much on base D and D as maybe it was on third down. You know, make sure those guys are in there. Out there for anything, anything, anything practice. No, he's now nah, he's out there. I mean, he's out. He's doing everything like it. But uh, you know, we'll see if we'll see if he's going to go or not. You know, that's a that's a delicate matter right there. So it's a uh, it's a matter if the doc gives you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You know, what's the key to stop and produce run offense? And, yeah. and how crucial will that be Saturday? They're they're they're, they're really good. I mean, their 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 backs are their backs are really good. You know, and their line. Um, their line is really athletic and they can move. So, you know, we got to we got to present different different angles on them, different challenges. You know, what I mean, like um, and and the crazy thing is they love the outside zones and stuff, but he's athletic enough to to if you give him the edge, he'll take it around the edge and gain 40. But also, you know, he he has really good vision where he sees a crease and he'll put he'll plant a foot in the ground and he'll cut it back against you. So it's going to be a it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a challenge for us to to make sure that we have edges set when we want those set and then to run the run the ball down when he's going sideways. Hey, Tony, in past weeks, you've said on Tuesday, it's a hard reset. We don't worry about last week. After what you saw on Friday, how much of it is that? How much of it is making sure these guys are thinking of that as they prep? Yeah, that's uh, 
another great another great question right there that's a uh, you know it's just human nature to feel feel some kind of way you know when you when you when you play like that but coach again you know you, you're always around coaching you always if you're truly listening you always you always getting the 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 wisdoms you know that you're listening to it like a player and it truly is like hey man we're, we're trying to go one and oh you know and and you you have a point of emphasis to fix and improve and all you do is focus on that and 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 make sure that that you bring the kind of energy that you want the players to have you know moving forward towards purdue i mean again this is a new challenge everything is there um and the guys, the guys went out there and practiced their tail off today. So um, they're just gonna, just gonna go one and zero, and just gonna go compete. That corner blitz with Sierra. How risky of a call is that, Tony? And how do you know when to let that thing go? Uh, that's, that's normal. Me. You know that, like sometimes that's a that is a uh, that's an automated response by either like a formation or like a, a down and distance and stuff. And so, you know, he he saw it and and he was aggressive. You know what I mean? And the crazy thing is, like, he, it was a, it was an RPO, so he pulled it back, and you could see Sierra trigger, and he kind of looked, and then he kept on going, where some, some guys might trigger and then stop and say pass and drop. He just kept going, and so it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a big time play, you know? It was fun to watch him do that. Anything else for fun? No, one more. Did, did, did you guys, did you guys blitz more? I mean, however you would determine that, if it's, you know, sending, sending more than four, did you, did you, um, how did that how did that look from your perspective as far as the the amount of, of frequency that you were dialing that up against in, in that game yeah, yeah i mean it, it, you know you knew they were going to run the ball so so again the first plan is to go out there and make sure they knew that they can't run the ball on you and so when at the spots we felt like hey they're running the ball we were mixing up the looks and bringing extra guys and stuff and and again you know they got whatever it was 40 yards at the half or something like that and then just just went away from that to try to try to affect the quarterback a little bit more and get, you know, get in the rhythm for third downs a little bit more. And like I said, a couple of those runs slice up in there and then had some had some uh, uh, MAs and all that stuff. So uh, definitely, you know, started mixing it up a little bit more. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.